Good morning and welcome to worship. Some scheduling stuff for this Holy Week for everyone who will be tuning in and around online. This service today on Facebook Live also will be live tomorrow on YouTube at 10 for those of you tuning in then. Monday, Thursday, we will be doing the stripping of the altar on Facebook Live. We'll get it up on YouTube a little bit later. Good Friday at noon, we'll have Stations of the Cross um, on YouTube. A number of pastors in a couple of counties got together to film the various stations so that we can have our noon on Good Friday time together. And then we'll be doing the solemn reproaches here at St. Paul on again on Facebook Live on Friday night and then later on YouTube. We have the Easter Vigil this year. Um, a few of us got together and recorded that yesterday. So the Easter Vigil will come to you on Saturday, and then on Sunday we will be Facebook Live at 10 o'clock on Easter Sunday. For those of you who have received a bulletin, I invite you to join with me as we begin our service for this, the Day of Palms. Please pray with me. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. As the people spread their coats, palm branches on the ground to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, so we welcome him into our lives this morning. King of glory, King of peace, servant king, reign in our hearts and lives this day and all days, that we might praise your holy name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, the in the highest. A reading from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let, let Israel, Israel say, his love endures forever. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the, From the house of the Lord we bless, bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand. Join in the festal procession up to the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks that you are my God, and I will exalt you. Give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. If you would, join me in a time of confession and forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are in bondage to sin, and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Jesus rode into Jerusalem, not as a conquering king, but in humility. The servant king ready to complete the task for which he had walked this world. Forgive us those times when we think too highly of ourselves, and remind us always that you ask from us lives dedicated to service, to you and to our neighbors, wherever and whoever they may be. Enable us, Lord, to take off our cloaks of self-righteousness and lay them down at your feet. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity, I said. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgive me the guilt of my sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by the authority of Christ, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Gospel reading today is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Beth Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. This is the gospel of our Lord. The journey to Jerusalem. As they're making their way, there's all sorts of obstacles, stumbling blocks, and reasons for Jesus to turn around. They come to the village of the Samaritans, and they reject them. James and John, the sons of thunder, ask Jesus if he wants them to call down fire upon the village. Okay, the most fascinating part of that story is nobody was surprised. So evidently James and John thought they could call down fire upon the village just whenever they felt like it. They get to a place where Jesus is teaching and talking, and Peter says to him, Lord, you know if you go to Jerusalem, they're going to kill you, and so basically over my dead body. And Jesus turns and looks at the disciples and tells them that they're thinking not of this world, but like Satan Jesus knows what awaits him when he comes to Jerusalem. It's the Passover festival. Jerusalem is full of pilgrims and folks who have come to do their holy obligations at the temple. And here comes Jesus, the Messiah, the one that people thought would be the conquering king, restoring all the glory to Israel and to Jerusalem, restoring the throne of David. He doesn't come in on a white charger leading an army of warriors. He comes in on an unridden colt with cloaks and palm branches. This week, as we will gather for our various times of worship, as we'll go through the passion narrative, we'll see how quickly things change. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Crucify him. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in peace. Crucify him. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the king of heaven. We have no king but Caesar. Crucify. Help us, Lord. Save us, Lord. Heal us, Lord. Give us Barabbas. How quickly within that week in the city of Jerusalem, the holy city, everything changes for Jesus. And Jesus came. 
let's get personal. Because it's easy for us some 2,000 years later to look back upon that city of Jerusalem and those who rejected Jesus and go, but if only I had been there, I would have been one of the faithful that would have stood with Jesus. Like Peter, who denies him three times. Like all of the other disciples who run and hide. Would we have been one singing Hosanna, Hosanna, on Sunday, and then on Friday, shouting, crucify him. In the last few weeks, as you and I and our world has been stretched and tested, I ask you, how many times have you swapped back and forth between blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord to crucify him? We get good news. Folks are recovering. The curve is flattening. Things look okay. We go to the grocery store and there's no rye bread. How can there be no rye bread? We see a friend walking down the street on a beautiful sunny day and we have a chance, keeping our proper physical distancing, of course, to have a conversation. And then we get a message that someone we care for and love is being tested. We hear the good news that there's all sorts of programs out there that will be able to help people along in these trying times. And then we get the word that folks have applied and gotten no help. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Crucify him. 2,000 years ago, as Jesus battles against his disciples' will, as he comes into Jerusalem on the colt, as the crowds come around wanting miracles and healing, as he gathers with his disciples in the upper room and he breaks bread, as he washes feet and teaches us how to love, Jesus came. And today, as we go from joy to sorrow, from fear to hope, from praise to uncertainty, from faith to doubt, Jesus comes. The Lord of our yesterdays, our todays, and our tomorrows comes. The promises of Palm Sunday as he rides in, not as the conquering king, but as a humble servant to forgive our sins, Jesus comes. As he comes to us in the midst of our doubt, our frustration, and our anxiety, Jesus comes. If you would have asked me as we gathered in this space on Christmas Eve, that come Easter Sunday we would be doing this from a distance, I would have laughed. If you would have told me a month ago as we gathered in this space and we brought folks from our medical field forward to pray that it would be the last act of worship that we did together in community in this space, I would have said, oh, we're going to be fine. And yet, here we are. Trust and doubt. Hope and despair. Joy and and anger all balled up into one place in our hearts, in our minds, and in our spirits. But here's the good news. Jesus comes. It may not look like what we expected today. We're not gathering, raving our palms together, singing Hosanna in the highest. I'm not going to be standing at the back door in a few minutes and having our young people come up and show me their folded crosses. We're not even able to gather palms this year to burn for ash next year. Our Jesus isn't coming to us on a white charger in a conquering army to restore the glory of Jerusalem. 
He comes to us on a colt. He comes to us. I need to see one of those, y'all. Where's one of those masks? He comes to us with people's goodness and hearts, making a mask that folks can wear to stay safe. He comes to us in phone calls and prayers. He comes to us in reaching out to our neighbor. He comes to us in our brokenness, in our fear, on a colt. And he comes to us with this promise. Not just on the weekend of palms or the celebration of Easter or at the time of crucifixion and betrayal, but each and every day at our times of joy and our sorrow with this promise. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Even if it doesn't look like quite what we expect. God is with us. So yes, on this Palm Sunday, we also celebrate the promise of the Nativity. In this time, in this day, in this place. Emmanuel, God with us. Thanks be to God. We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and everlasting God, you are worthy to be held in reverence by all the mortal race. We give you thanks for the innumerable blessings which despite our unworthiness you have showered upon us. We praise you especially that you have preserved for us in their purity your saving word and the sacred ordinances of your house. Grant and preserve to your church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who will preach your word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and firmly to believe your word of truth. Protect and defend your people in time of tribulation and danger that we in communion with your church and unit, in unity with all Christian people may fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the fullness of salvation. Upon all the nations of the earth, bestow your grace. Especially we ask you to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause your glory to dwell among us and let mercy and truth, justice and peace everywhere prevail. We commend to your care all our schools, that virtue and useful knowledge may be nourished through distance and the wholesome fruits of life may abound. In your mercy, defend us from all calamities by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper all who labor and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Show yourself to be the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we pray, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers together with these gifts as our offering of praise. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us to prepare for the world to come, doing the work which you have given us to do while it is day, before that night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour shall come, support us by your power and receive us into your everlasting kingdom, where with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, God, forever. Amen. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge over us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. And again, before our Lord's Prayer, we pray. Almighty God, we often pray that we are on a journey whose destination is unknown. We are all walking this road less traveled. 
we pray this day for all of those in and around our lives who were touched by this pandemic. We pray for faithful and wise leaders who are making difficult decisions. We pray for scientists who are working feverishly for a cure. We pray for those on staffs in hospitals and clinics who are exhausted and weary. We pray for those few chaplains that have access to those who are ill, who are struggling to bring hope and peace. We pray for family members and loved ones who are separated from one another and whose contact is either electronic or waving through a window. We pray for those who have been tested and anxiously await results, worrying and stressed about their own health and well-being and all of those who they may have touched. We pray for those who are stacking grocery shelves and delivering goods and working in those things that are deemed essential. We pray for those who rush in when others rush away, our police and our fire and our medics. We pray for those, Almighty God, who are alone and isolated, introvert and extrovert, who are struggling with this isolation. We give you thanks, Lord, that you are with us. And we pray an extra measure and portion of your love be poured out upon us as we struggle and stumble along. And Lord, we pray for your church. We pray as the Father in Mark prayed, Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Strengthen us by your Spirit that we may know your peace that passes all understanding. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before the benediction, a word of thanks and an encouragement. A huge thank you to those out there who are continuing to give to support your local ministries and congregations. This is a scary time. Um, the folks around here have been amazing, and I pray that you continue to do so. But there's folks seeing this who aren't associated with this congregation and have places in your own community. Please find ways to reach out and to support them. Many congregations are stumbling along and struggling, worried and stressed about how to do simple things like keep the lights on. So prayerfully, I encourage you to help as best you can. For in the end, when this is all over, and it will end and be over. Believe me, it will be your local congregations, your local pastors, your local leaders who will be helping put the pieces back together of a society and a community that's been divided. They need your prayers and support now more than ever. And please, with stay-at-home orders, Hear this benediction of our Lord. As you stay in place, know that Christ stays with you, before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you. But our Lord's promise to each and every one of us in this unknown journey of life and faith is to remain in our hearts and to grant us his peace. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. God loves you, and so do I.